ओम ज्ञानतिमीराजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मील येना तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्णप्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिदातस्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर इन दिस सेशन विल बी डिस्कसिंग फ्रॉम वर्सेस 34 टू 36 सिक्स द लास्ट थ्री वर्सेस ऑफ दिस टेंथ चैप्टर ऑफ द फर्स्ट कैंट ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम थर्टी फोर्थ वर्स कुरुजांगल पांचाला शूरसेना सयामुना ब्रह्मवर्त कुक्षेत्र मत्स्या सारस्वता अथ मरुधन्व अतिक्रम्य सौवीर अभीरयो परान आनर्तान भार्दवो पागात शांतवाहो मना विभु दिस इज एक्चुअली द थर्टी फोर्थ एंड द थर्टी फिफ्थ वर्सेस टुगेदर दे हैव बीन गिवन हियर थर्टी फोर्थ एंड थर्टी फिफ्थ वर्सेस ऑफ दिस टेन चैप्टर ऑफ फर्स्ट कैंटो सो द ट्रांसलेशन इज ऑल्सो गिवन टुगेदर दिस इज स्पोकन बाय सूत गोस्वामी वेन ही इज नरेटिंग these past times to uh, the sages of naimisharanya headed by shaunaka so addressing shaunaka who is the representative of all the sages in naimisharanya uh, sutugo swami is addressing shaunaka o shaunaka the lord then proceeded towards kurujangala panchala shurasena the land on the bank of the river yamuna brahmavarta kurukshetra matsya saraswata the province of the desert and the land of scanty water after crossing these provinces he gradually reached the sauvira and abhira provinces then west of these reached dwaraka at last so the description is krishna has uh, started from hastinapura and he is going to proceed towards dwaraka crossing the different uh, parts of the uh, land in between hastinapur and dwaraka so shri la propar explains in the purport about this uh, different uh, lands being described in this word in these two verses the provinces passed over by the lord in those days 5000 years back were differently named but the direction given is sufficient to indicate that he traveled through delhi punjab rajasthan madhya pradesh saurashtra and gujarat and at last reached his home province at dwaraka so proper is trying to explain these are all historical incidents and they are not imaginary stories described in the bhagavatam the puranas the itihasas they are not imaginary uh fiction they are not fiction they are real happenings just because it does not fit with our uh our uh, logical thinking we should not reject them as uh, mythology or something unacceptable unbelievable it may appear unbelievable but actually it's a fact we do not gain any profit simply by researching the analogous provinces of those days up to now but it appears that the desert of rajasthan and the provinces of scanty water like madhya pradesh were present even 5000 years ago some characteristics of certain land are the same 
uh, were the same 5000 years back as is indicated by the statements in the Bhagavatam. So these are factual uh, statements, these are not uh, some uh, imaginary uh, things. The theory of soil experts that the desert developed in recent years is not supported by the statements of the Bhagavatam. Some speculation modern uh, researchers in indulge in uh, because they have limited resources, they have limited uh, brains and they have limited uh, um, access to knowledge. So they speculate, they theorize. So they theorize that uh, deserts developed in recent years. It is not there in ancient times. Prabhupada says no. Even 5000 years back as given in the Bhagavatam, the, the desert portion and the, uh, the, the part of the land where there was scanty water existed 5000 years back. Krishna passed through that while proceeding from Hastinapura to Dwaraka. We may leave the matter for expert geologists to research because the changing universe has different phases of geological development. It is also a fact that the uh, land uh, mass keeps changing as there are uh, changes happening over very very long periods of time. It does happen. So let them do the research. We are not so much interested in the research. Hmm? We are satisfied that the Lord has now reached his own province Dwarka Dhamma from the Kuru provinces. Kurukshetra continues to exist since the Vedic age and it is sheer foolishness when interpreters ignore or deny the existence of Kurukshetra. So Bhagavad Gita, some people write commentaries, not some people, many of them. Their commentaries uh, indicate that Kurukshetra is not actually referring to some battlefield. It is referring to the body or referring to some uh, conflict within the mind, all kinds of um, uh, speculations uh, when are uh, presented when some of the commentators or translators of Bhagavad Gita write their own version, their opinion, their understanding, their theories, their uh, analysis, but those are all full of defects because they themselves are defective, they are conditioned souls. We accept translations and commentaries by liberated souls who do not speculate, who pass on the perfect knowledge received from Krishna in Parampara without any change, without any alteration, without any speculation without any addition or subtraction or any uh, alteration. They present as it is. Prabhupada has written Bhagavad Gita as it is. Kurukshetra is the actual place where the battle took place 5000 years back between the Pandavas and Kauravas. It is a factual reporting in the Mahabharata, in the Bhagavata. Thirty-sixth verse, the last verse. Tatra Tatraha Tatratyair Harihi Pratyudya Tarahanaha Sayam Bheje Disham Paschad Gavishto Gam Gatastada. The meaning of this verse is on his journey through these provinces, he was welcomed, worshipped, and given various presentations. In the evening, in all places, the Lord suspended his journey to perform evening rites. This was regularly observed after sunset. You should remember the Lord is playing the part of a Kshatriya. So they belong to the uh, Vedic culture. So they follow certain uh, practices. At least the uh, Brahmana Kshatriyas and Vaishyas in the Vedic culture they follow certain practices as described in the prescribed in the Shastras, in the Vedic scriptures. 
So Prabhupada says in the purport, it is said here that the Lord observed the religious principles regularly while he was on the journey. There are certain philosophical speculations that even the Lord is under the obligations of fruitive action. Karma. Some people say Krishna is under the laws of karma. That is wrong. Krishna is never under the laws of karma. But actually this is not the case. Krishna does not depend on the action of any good or bad work. Since the Lord is absolute, everything done by him is good for everyone. Unlike us, we do some action. It is judged according to the laws of karma as pious or impious. Pious actions have got pious reactions, good reactions. And impious activities, sinful activities have got sinful reactions. So we accordingly either uh, enjoy or suffer the results of our own activities which are under the laws of karma. Krishna is never under the laws of karma. Krishna is the master of all the uh, laws of material nature. He is the master of material nature. He is the supreme controller of material nature. So he is never under the control. But still it is explained here, when Krishna descends on earth, he acts for the protection of the devotees and for the annihilation of the impious non-devotees. Although he has no obligatory duty, still he does everything so that others may follow. Krishna also teaches by his own example how to follow the Vedic injunctions. So if he plays the part of a Kshatriya, he follows the Vedic injunctions which are prescribed for a Kshatriya. That is the way of factual teaching. One must act properly himself and teach the others uh, how to follow the Vedic injunctions by his own actions. Otherwise, no one will accept one's blind teaching. Hmm? So, Krishna himself is the awarder of fruitive results. He is self-sufficient, yet he acts according to the rulings of the revealed scripture in order to teach us the process of following the Vedas. If he does not do so, the common man may go wrong. But a warning is given here. In the advanced stage, when one can understand the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna, one does not try to imitate him. This is not possible. So every action of Krishna is not meant for teaching us. Some actions are meant for teaching us. Some of the actions, as Prabhupada explains in further, the Lord in human society does what is the duty of everyone, but sometimes he does something extraordinary and not to be imitated by the living being. His acts of evening prayer, as stated herein, must be followed by the living beings, but it is not possible to follow his mountain lifting or dancing with the gopis. So what we should follow and what we should not imitate, this distinction has, must be there when we hear about or read or try to examine the activities performed by Krishna in his entire manifestation on this earth. One cannot imitate the sun which can exhaust water even from a filthy place. Example again is given of the sun. The sun is so powerful. Even the sun evaporates some filthy water from a dirty place. The sun doesn't become polluted. Ludicrous to think that sun will become contaminated. No. So, the principle is the most powerful can do something which is all good. But our imitation of such acts will put us into endless difficulty. So, we should not imitate the most powerful personalities, the controllers, what they do. Shiva drank an ocean of poison. But Shiva's followers try to imitate Shiva and they get into so much of problems. So they, they say Shiva smokes ganja, so we can also smoke ganja. But Shiva smokes ganja for a different purpose. He has no attraction or addiction. He has no desire to enjoy smoking ganja. 
he does that just to give association for living entities who are in the mode of ignorance tamasic living entities bhutas pretas pishachas etc like that krishna performs some activities to protect his devotees mountain lifting govardhan hill but we cannot imitate we should never try to imitate that therefore one should be guided by the bona fide spiritual master to distinguish between what we should follow among the activities of krishna and which actions of krishna are not to be imitated the spiritual master should be the guide for all such um, uh, practices of our own our own following the practice of bhakti we should be guided by the spiritual master i'll stop here thank you very much hari krishna